Welcome to you all. Um, this is now the second time we come together um, to discuss different ways in which forest and farm producer women can be empowered. Um, and the objective of this dialogue series is to offer uh, women members and representatives of um, producer organizations a platform to connect with each other, inspire each other, share and exchange on your experiences and visions. Um, each dialogue has a particular theme or a topic, but always with a connection to women's empowerment. Um, and the topic of our first dialogue event in March, um, if you recall, was entrepreneurial and leadership mentoring and peer-to-peer -peer learning. So opportunities which allow uh, women entrepreneurs and leaders to have access to experienced mentors and coaches who can provide guidance and support as they build and grow their businesses and leadership. Um, and um, we have recorded the event and Isabella is um, uh, going to link us to, to this recording. So you can, if you've missed it, you can, you can watch it in your own time. Um, and during this event uh, in March, we've also collectively generated a range of recommendations of on how women producer organizations, businesses, and leaders could be supported and could support each other through mentorship and peer-to-peer -peer learning. And we pulled all of these lessons learned into an infographic. Um, perhaps maybe now is also a good moment, Ellie, to share the screen again, because it is in in the presentation slides, just to give you a quick visual um, impression. And Isabella is also um, copying a link into the chat so you can look at it in your own time as well. So this would be after the agenda slide. Really. And um, so to, so this is the this is the infographic that was the result of our last session, which we are quite proud of, and we hope that it is useful to you and your organizations and very happy if you share it with others. Um, so to make this dialogue series useful and relevant, we have also asked the participants of the first event, if you remember, to name us topics um, you would like to see covered in the series. And one of the topics that was most often nominated was information and communication technology or ICT or digital technologies and how they can become useful in helping women to organize as a group, in boosting women's economic initiatives, in increasing access to new markets, ways of marketing, enhanced networking, collaboration, etc. So today's dialogues, uh, dialogue will focus on how digital technologies could be useful in advancing the cause of women. And we will hear about um, we'll hear from three speakers about some innovative and inspiring ICT tools and services that are being put to use um, by groups of very diverse size and, and nature. After the presentation, uh, maybe Ali, if you can switch to the next slide with the, with the agenda. So after the presentations, um, we'll have about 15 minutes to ask the presenters questions, and then we will break into separate virtual rooms, um, one for English speaking participants, one for French speaking participants, and one for Spanish speaking participants. And in these breakout groups, we would really like to encourage you all to have a conversation about where you think digital tools or ICT could be most useful and feasible in boosting women's entrepreneurship, leadership, confidence, etc. So we really hope that within these smaller uh, group conversations in the languages that you feel most comfortable in, you will be able to exchange on your own personal experiences, capacities, visions, and hopes around the use of, of digital technologies in your own context. Okay, so um, just before we start the presentations, I wanted to set the scene a little bit um, um, by giving you a very brief introduction into the topic. And Ali, we can go to the next slide and why it is of, of relevance for women, forest and farm producers, entrepreneurs and community leaders. We know that women producers and entrepreneurs, in especially in rural areas um, in the global South, face an uneven playing field, meaning when compared with their male peers, they have less access to 
and control over productive resources, this includes land, um, lack of access to education, information, technologies, services, rights and legal protection, networks and decision-making processes. Uh, and we also know that reducing this gender inequ inequity is essential for poverty reduction and sustainable development. There is an increasing recognition that when women are empowered as entrepreneurs and leaders, they play greater roles in their communities, um, in household decision making, are able to increase their personal well-being, and are able to invest responsibly for the collective benefit of their families and communities. Next slide, please, Ali. And uh, new information and communication technology or digital technologies may offer great opportunities for closing this gender gap just described. So ICT can um, boost women's economic uh, initiatives by, for example, raising awareness of and raising awareness of and enable access to markets and marketing means, for example, through agricultural e-commerce platforms, so essentially websites um, through which agricultural produce can be sold. Um, they can improve market access, but also access to formal contracts um, with buyers and increase income through a broader customer base and uh, more access to information on what, what is actually desired by, by the market and the customers, and what are their preferences. ICT can also support the skill development for women who are unfortunately often forced to cut their formal education short by um, connecting women through mobile phones to mentorship services. So this is linking back to our first dialogue topic um, or, uh, to, or enhancing their access to extension and, and, and advisory services via mobile phones and that um, we know may lead to higher uh, agricultural productivity, increased confidence and increased equity also within households. Uh, ICT or digital tools can also enhance networking, networking and collaboration between women who might be geographically too distant to meet in person, um, especially as women are often more homebound or bound to the to the household um, than than their men counterparts, um, their male peers. Um, ICT uh, or digital financial services can also further financial um, inclusion and independence for women, helping them to overcome again these geographical barriers, helping them formalize their businesses, build up credit histories. Um, Mobile technology can also help women make decisions that are informed by data. Um, so uh, a, a, a very simple example is a, a mobile phone uh, weather forecast app that warns of any impending uh, downpour. So you may bring in the crop that you're drying outside in the sun in time um, to not get it spoiled. Um, ICT digital tools can also improve women's organizational processes, and we will hear about this in our first um, example later on in our first case. They also allow um, for the flexible uh, as they as they allow for flex flexibility in in engaging with business. Um, they allow for an easier accommodation of the the, the triple responsibility that that women often carry, which is. Um, course related to their home and caring for family members but also for 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 income and and food security um and then of course mastering um digital technologies can immensely boost the confidence and thus also the social standing of women within their families and their homes so all of these factors together can really lead in the long term to to inclusive growth and as you may know, the forest and farm facility has as its main focus the strengthening of forest and farm producer organizations, or FFPOs. Um, Women-led and majority women formal and informal produ producer organizations such as yours can help rural women overcome poverty and facilitate access to resources, assets, markets, services. Um, and some FFPOs have already started to offer a range of ICT services and tools. 
Some are specifically tailored for their women members. And we now have the opportunity to hear um, from our three presenters on experiences with such ICT services or tools. And with this, I would like to give the virtual floor to our first speaker, Ms. Basha Mehta from the Self-Employed Women's Association, SEWA, joining us from India. Um, those of you who have, who have participated in our first dialogue already know Basha, having presented the SEWA Ni Manager School as an interesting mentoring and peer-to-peer -peer initiative for women. And just for those of you who have not participated in our last dialogue, a few words of introduction. Vasha is an independent researcher with an academic background in forestry management. And for over 30 years, she has worked on projects focusing on food and livelihood security, natural resource management, and gender equity. Uh, with UN agencies, the World Bank, and NGOs. Vasha will provide us uh, with a short overview of a whole range of innovative and inspiring ICT tools and services offered by SEWA uh, to its many, many members. Uh, so welcome, Vasha. Over to you. You have 10 to 12 minutes for your presentation. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Kata. And uh, it's indeed a pleasure and an honor to be here and presenting Seva's case study to this audience. Um, to start with, I just wanted to say that what I'm going to present is the work of Seva, which is a a national entity registered as a trade union and consisting of uh, about 2.5 million members. And the initiatives in information communication technology, which uh, we will see in a little while, have uh, been pioneered by SEVA's IT team and its members. Uh, I have been fortunate to have the opportunity to look at them closely, understand, and be the medium to uh, share it with this larger audience. Uh, next, please. I will begin with an overview of uh, SEVA uh, for those of you who may not be familiar with the organization. So, like I said, SEVA is a huge uh, movement which is uh, which consists of 2.5 million women in the informal sector working in the informal sector and these members they consist of farmer producers agriculture all kinds of agriculture and allied activities farmers um, vendors and hawkers women who are home based workers uh, operating cottage industries as well as service providers uh, in a range of uh, domains. Uh, the goal of SEVA is full employment and self-reliance for its women members. And the way it is structured is, uh, they like to describe it as a huge banyan tree. If people know what a banyan tree is, it, it drops out these, uh, these roots from various branches and eventually the, the, the roots that are dropped from the top, they take root on the ground and it's hard to distinguish which is the original root of the tree and which are the, uh, the newer roots. So it's, it's, it's a conglomerate of a number of organizations and each organization is uh, an autonomous body. Um, with the, the rights and responsibilities that they define for themselves, uh, in which there is very little uh, interference from SEVA originally, uh, from, the, from the original SEVA that is, about which I'm going to be talking today. Um, the structure that uh, I, I have looked at is this original SEVA, which has uh, district associations uh, and um, below the district associations, there are clusters and spearhead teams which are working with women on the ground. 
So in terms of member services, the most important perhaps is linking women with economic opportunity, uh, building their capacities. And uh, um, when I say building capacities is not only formal training, but uh, being there with uh, women to impart new skills and knowledge and being and staying with them for the life cycle of a product or a service for which they have received the training till the woman is competent enough to roll it off on her own. Um, increasingly, Seva has, uh, and Seva has been in existence for more than 50 years now and uh, more than 75 years. Uh, I think, yeah. And um, uh, for the last 10, 20 years or more, yes, or more they have been they have, uh, providing uh, market uh, linkages market. Uh, to its members. And uh, for, for this uh, market linkage initiative, they have experimented with various forms, which we will look at in the subsequent uh, uh, slides. Next, please. So uh, the use of digital tools in SEVA is broadly for uh, five different kinds of activities that the organization is, um, uh, is, is, is using and is working on. The first and foremost, because it is such a large organization and a movement, is of organization and communication and uh, I will be talking a little bit more in detail about an application that has been developed to make the system of organizing and movement building more efficient. It is called the membership management system. We will come to that in a bit. The next uh, uh, area of use of digital tools is uh, capacity building of its members. Like I said, capacity building is an important service that SEVA provides its members with. And uh, um, since, since the time that COVID hit, they have, uh, they have evolved their systems of training and capacity building to also include self-paced training and e-learning modules. Um, the next is uh, to do with strengthening livelihoods of its members and here, the apps, the digital tools that Seva has introduced have to do with marketing of produce, uh, both internally, that is within the Seva uh, network and externally to the larger market. And secondly, for better management of inventory. Uh, and, and there is an app here. There are two apps, in fact, uh, in the livelihoods domain that I will be discussing uh, in a little while in greater detail. One of it is for an internal market um, and the second one is for an external market. In terms of financial services, SEVA has, uh, uh, especially in the state of Gujarat, now SEVA operates across 14 uh, or 17 different, 18 different states in the country. And uh, in the state of Gujarat, especially, they are very strong on formation of savings and credit groups of women. Now, uh, the, the bookkeeping and accounts and such aspects of these financial services were manually taken care of earlier. Now, they have moved to use of apps. M. Bachat is one of the apps that I will be detailing going forward. Uh, in addition to that, there are other kinds of financial services and I'll briefly touch upon those as well. And lastly, there is a range of supportive services, for example, uh, telemedicine, access to doctors uh, on, on, uh, uh, through, through online means or checking uh, the availability of transportation services. There are a few partnerships that SEVA entered into with automobile manufacturers who have provided uh, vehicles to, um, uh, to SEVA's district, some of the district uh, organizations. 
and uh, there is there is an electronic system by which members who want to avail services of these um, facilities can check and book the service in advance and there is an ambulance etc so uh, i was actually quite overwhelmed when i first learned about the range of uh, tools and uh, applications and systems that seva has already introduced and uh, uh, which which wasn't expected really um, you know it was uh, the idea of seva was that it's this huge organization and therefore the, it will be cumbersome plus most of the members are rural women um, not many of them are very literate they can uh, they have functional literacy I'm they can probably it. sign and stuff so that was the context um next please now now uh, this uh, slide i have put in the uh, before we forward in the presentation is to show the new face of seva the members who are now joining seva are young women who are technologically savvy who have uh, with their own savings or through uh, credit purchased high quality high end devices like a mobile phone and uh, other equipment what you see in the image on the right side is uh, there is there is this small thing on the left most in the right slide which is to capture the biometric um information the the thumbprint of a user and the little black box on the right side of that image is actually a mini printer Uh, which can be used to print out a receipt quickly and hand over to the user now with this new face of seva um the kind of services that uh, members are able to avail and members are also using uh, has um, has has reached proportions which is quite commendable next please okay so the first thing that i understood from seva colleagues was that before i mean and this is based on their learnings before launching into a full scale um transition to digital or uh, 100% adoption of digital for whatever purpose it is important to assess the digital readiness of its members and this digital readiness they measure uh, they assess in terms of three important parameters one is are they equipped with the right device is it is it advanced enough to support the kind of applications that uh, we are talking about is it appropriate for the purpose and is it affordable um the second the second important aspect of digital readiness was whether there is network connectivity is there adequate uh, infrastructure or digital infrastructure in the areas where members are residing to be able to use the device along with the third aspect which is the knowledge and capability of the members to uh, make use of the device for uh, use of information technology so th these three are key and i will revisit uh, i will reemphasize on the digital readiness part towards the end of the presentation to let it be a key a, a key takeaway message from this presentation next please basha just quickly uh, yes 3 minutes please oh 3 minutes only mm. oh, okay thank you yeah. okay no problem so um the first uh, the first app that uh, i'm going to talk about is the membership management system which is used uh, uh by seva leaders to build the seva movement next please so what the membership management system app does is it allows the leaders to renew existing membership through the app on their phone 
Earlier, that used to be manually done. It allows them to add new members, and it also produces static membership reports, which is a, a record of how many uh, members, new members have been enlisted and how many existing members still remain to be covered. Because given Seva's legal entity, which is of a trade union, their membership needs to be annually renewed. Now, this app, this app is being used by about 2,000 SEVA leaders across various levels. And as a result of this, they have been able to do away with uh, a full-time uh, leadership, um, a membership management uh, data entry team that was present at the headquarters. They used to be surrounded with piles of forms that were manually submitted and transported across the various offices till they reached the headquarters. And there was a six month to eight to 12 months sometimes time lag in between the data and information being entered into the computer and the final numbers and trends being made available to the leadership for decision making. So that's uh, that whole system has been revamped, and now it is being uh, now it is happening electronically completely. Next, please. The second thing that I'm going to talk about is the internal uh, marketing system, which I said has been set up by Seva. It's the Rudi Sandesha Vyavhar. Rudi is rural distribution, and Sandesha Vyavhar means. Uh, the communication system. So uh, basically, Rudy was a Rudy multi trading. Uh, uh, please let's let's go to the next slide. I I have the full name there. Um, on the next one. Yes. So the the Rudy multi trading company limited is actually a, a company that was a for profit company that was set up by several cooperatives within the Seva system. And what they do is they procure farm produce from their members. And uh, this is packed, uh, this is processed, packed, and distributed within their network by women representatives of Rudy. And there are about 3,000 of them now. Um, through the, uh, so, so these women are called Rudy Baines. And these Rudy Baines, are the ones who are using the RSV app, which has facilitated the process of obtaining orders, placing the orders with the uh, the central inventory or the district level uh, inventory office, and also ensuring that the products are, uh, the delivery of products is streamlined across all the, um, the consumers who are availing of uh, the Rudy products. And Rudy promises, uh, as as you know, most women-based organizations working in this area, uh, purity and uh, superior quality of produce, zero adulteration, etc. Uh, can we go back one slide, please? Just a quick. Uh, um, uh, so this is this was a case study that I did with uh, Pushpa Bain, Pushpa, who is a Rudy Bain. She sells Rudy products, and back in 2019. Uh, with a lot of trepidation, she uh, took some credit and purchased a smartphone for twelve thousand rupees, not knowing how uh, she would she would be able to recover that amount. But within a couple of months, maybe more than a couple of months, within six months, I think she was able to recover all the amount that she uh, put into purchase of the phone through her Rudy sales. Now she's earning around 7,000 every month from sales of Rudy products. In addition, when she visits her clients for sale of Rudy products, she also carries other uh, knickknacks which women are interested in and uh, uh, derives a profit margin out of those two. Next and next. We Excuse can... me, Vasha, one more minute, please. Um, yes, yes. I'm, have... I'm, I'm, yes, thank I'm, you. Please give me one more minute extra. So M Bachat app is to facilitate financial services. The young woman who I showed you as the young face of Seva, she is one of the persons who uses this. And in addition, she has also received training from uh, Seva to become 
what is known as a bank correspondent or a bank sakhi. They provide doorstep financial services to uh, Seva's members in uh, villages. Next, please. So Embachat app is basically used to streamline and make uh, to increase the efficiency of uh, management of savings and credit groups. Next, please. Uh, Seva Bazaar is the is is a relatively recent initiative of uh, Sevas, and it has benefited from experiences with development of apps, the previous generation of apps uh, that Seva has been working on. It does three things essentially. It uh, enhances the life livelihoods it helps um, um, it, it it helps the artisans to reach a larger market and thirdly so this is the external market and uh, thirdly it tries to preserve traditional crafts that uh, seva members are very adept at very skilled and adept at uh, next please uh, the, this uh, this is a collage of some of the products that are uh, being sold through the Seva Bazaar app and portal. Um, you can visit Seva Bazaar later. I will type it out in the uh, in the chat box later. Next, please. To wrap it up, the main challenges of uh, introduction of IT within the Seva system are first of all with the project based funding. As with most NGOs, it has been a piecemeal approach. Sometimes there has been duplication of effort. There have been interferences from donors in terms of what should be included and how things should be done. And eventually, sometimes the end product has suffered. So a lot of effort and time sometimes has gone into developing an app, but uh, the end result remained unutilized. So it's not like something was done and that worked. There will be a few failures, and that, that has been the case with Seva. Um, also, they had a graduated approach because perhaps of the project-based funding and because of the learning curve that they were going through themselves. Um, uh, the graduated approach works very well for women, for users who are not so familiar with information technology, but simultaneously it poses the challenge of uh, integration of data and systems at the back end. So the technical team is, is highly challenged with all of these. And lastly, because there are multiple applications for uh, different users, uh, the, the same user sometimes has to uh, remember multiple login credentials for each of the applications. And now they are trying to uh, bring this all together with, uh, uh, with the Seva app, a new app that is being thought about. So uh, next, please. In terms of lessons learned, uh, women from rural areas with very low levels of literacy have proven to be champions of technology as well as technological change in rural areas provided they are given adequate support and adequate and appropriate support and training. Um, the digital readiness is key. This is something that I, um, mentioned earlier, but I'm repeating it here. It's very important to ensure that users are equipped with the right device. They have the network connectivity and they possess the skills and capacity to use it uh, to its potential. And uh, lastly, it is important to build in the user perspective at all stages from conception to design and uh, development and uh, deployment of the app, <coughs> which um, which uh, improves the user interface and aids in overall adoption of the uh, tool or the application. Next, please. This is the last slide. In terms of <coughs> recommendations, this some of it I have already alluded to in the course of the presentation, but a graduated approach for users who are not very familiar with IT is recommended. Uh, Seva in the early stages provided a loan of rupees 10,000 to its members to be returned within six months 
uh, it was an interest free loan but it was made available for them to be able to purchase the devices um the importance of online safety and security measures is underlined in the training and in the design of the apps uh, this is particularly true where there are financial transactions involved through the app um long term engagement of technical agencies which are which may be required which would be hired in most cases uh, by ngos to help with developing the app is important because often the app has to go through several revisions uh, once it is deployed and the user feedback starts pouring in uh, next uh, to keep the uh, the app light uh, on the user's device there is minimal use of memory on the local device and this again is a technical thing which needs to be uh, brought to the notice of the service provider the technical service provider the other important aspect in seva which has ensured that users adopted the technology which was provided was other than training there was dedicated support for every query there is a there is a lady called bhavna ben who's part of the it team and she was the one who guided me through most of uh, uh, my case study research uh, so she is that to to to, I'm, to, I'm to I'm we really done. need to wrap it up now to I'm give I'm a chance done. for the other yes. presenters to present as well thanks i'm almost done so dedicated support is key otherwise users may give up uh, the app with a bad experience and lastly there is ongoing mentoring and peer learning so uh, members who have learned it already will will be happy to share their knowledge and uh, skills with other users uh, that is all uh, next please thank you very much for your attention and for giving me this opportunity kata isabella uh, and iit i if seva colleagues are here i would be very happy uh for them to join me in answering any questions if there are thank you very much vasha thank you so much for this really interesting and rich presentation i think we've all learned a lot and there is definitely a lot to learn from from sewa and of course it's an organization that is very evolved it has been in existence for over 50 years it has many many members it had time to grow and develop and um just perhaps as a wrapping up um of the presentation just wanted to sort of say that some of the 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 technology that you've pre presented is very advanced and uh, and perhaps can serve as an inspiration um for for organizations that are younger or smaller as something to to plan for in the future um but I don't want to lose much time we've gone a little bit over time already so I would like to introduce our next speaker um uh, who is uh, Dr. Nguyen Hu Nguyen joining us from Vietnam uh Nguyen is the vice dean of the faculty of economics and rural development um of the Vietnam National University of Agriculture he holds a phd and a master's degree in natural resource economics and has over two decades of experience in teaching and development research focusing on participatory impact evaluation in the agricultural and rural development sector and nguyen will present to us a very interesting example of a women's cooperative in vietnam using digital technologies in the form of a product tracing system that allows buyers to of their agricultural products to check the production that production quality standards have been followed by the producers so welcome run over to you you also have 10 to 12 minutes for your presentation please okay uh, thank you very much kata and hello everyone so i'm very happy to share with you a story from uh, vietnam women union uh, women uh, economic empowerment uh, through our city service and and tools and tools and the case of tự uh, nhiên cooperative in in mộc châu district uh, sona province uh, in the northwest of vietnam next please Uh, so uh, it start with the uh, story actually the uh, women here they are own small farmer 
and they have very small uh, land. And uh, in the past, so they focus mainly on agriculture with no income, and they grow maize and uh, some sort of uh, term crop uh, on sloping land. And in uh, 1911, uh, with the support from uh, Australian uh, Center for International Agri Agricultural Research, so they uh, they set up the cooperative uh, with uh, only seven uh, hect uh, five hectare. And the founding member, uh, they are all women, five women, uh, including the uh, three founder of a cooperative. And um, the women there is they are uh, uh, King and Thai and Mường and Thai. That's, it means that there are four ethnic city uh, in the uh, uh, cooperative. And recently, with the support from uh, ACR, they also have another project on uh, off season vegetable production and also uh, the project on. Uh, Final thing, uh, digital monitoring of uh, the environmental environmental performance in uh, horticulture, and FFF program also implemented a number of activity to support uh, to maintain the uh, uh, and improving the production capacity for core leader and the member. Yeah, thank you, please. Uh, so, uh. Right now, I can say that is uh, the cooperative is very successful. Uh, uh, they they now focus mainly on produce vegetable. They now produce three type of vegetable, and uh, with the uh, making the advantages of the normal conditions, so they produce both uh, in season and off season vegetable, and uh, they have the take advantages of uh, off season vegetable to sell to Hanoi market. So now their product is uh uh rich not only the local market but also the modern market like the eon supermarket mega market and not there and big c and big queen that's their own big uh, supermarket in hanoi a city and other province and uh recently they also make the strategy to develop the eco tourism from their own farm not only for vegetable production but uh, they are trying to do with some uh, uh, eco tourism services my homestay and farm experience. So, so how can they achieve that uh, thing? So not easy, but uh, the link, link please. So I will tell you, so how can they assess the uh, super market and the modern market in Hanoi? So from the technical development, so they started to uh, apply the digital technology, especially with the QR code and the digital theory for production. And the good thing that is, uh, in order to uh, sell product to the modern market. So they need to meet the requirement of the Việt Gap. We call Việt Gap, Vietnam Good Agricultural Practice. Uh, and uh, to trace for the uh, origin and also the quality and with the support of, from the, uh, of the project. So they, they apply the uh, digital theory where the farmer uses the smartphone F to record every day daily activity of their farm, uh, and then the, the, the data is, tran is transferred to the computer, and it managed by the co-op leader. It's also the women, and uh, they uh, print out the uh, uh, QR code uh, label, and after that, is they sell to, to they stick on the uh, product, and when they sell to the market in Hanoi and city and other big city, so the customer easy to trace not only where the product to produce, but how the product is produced by weak farm. And I think it, it is very amazing for small farmer because they are, because they are all a, a small women, not the big farm. And because of that, so the quality and the reputation of the cooperative is become is, uh, more and more attracted by the customer. And so the cooperative, they can sign the uh, stable contract with the buyers from Hanoi market and from other, and they sell own products throughout the year with very high price compared to the other product. And like, please. Uh, here is some uh, uh, photo of the product uh, of the cooperative where the vegetable packet, uh, packaging and digital traceability uh, can be a visual. And, uh, I think it's the first time the women there, they said that it's the first time they can use a mobile phone app uh, to record 
the uh, daily activity of their production and business, uh, and then especially the production uh, information. And this helps them to save time, to reduce time, uh, to, uh, to, to write the, uh, the written paper uh, uh, diary, not before. And so they are very happy for that. Next, please. And uh, recently, they also have the ambitions to uh, not only to trade for the uh, origin, but also they organize the temperature and humidity measuring device. And this is supported by Australian Center for Agricultural Research Project. Uh, it's in the, in the binary uh, process, but it seems that it seems that is the cooperative they want to co continue this good practice because they uh, with the, this, with the device when they set up on the the vegetable uh, truck and so they can record the ring time data of the the vegetable from the farm to Hanoi market and especially the modern uh, customer the modern market they they highly appreciate uh, uh, this thing and they trust the quality of the uh, product from the uh, cooperative and they they want to sign more contract with the co-op and the women there even with a small farm but they now it become uh they get a very high uh, profit uh, from vegetable uh, production like please and here is uh, some impact so for many things but i i can see that is uh, uh the key impact uh from the application of the digital technology is the first is is an enhanced social capital. So why? Because uh, the farmer when they work together in the cooperative and when they apply the digital uh, diary and QR code, and uh, it is controlled by the cooperative leader and with the support uh, technical support from the co-op co leader and also the contract uh, from the co-op with the supermarket and other actors. So. It helps them to work together in the group and to produce uh, good product and uh, with the high quality and quantity uh, enough to supply to the uh, modern market. And uh, especially the women empowerment and environmental protection. So here's some example. So from very simple uh, production, now they have three, uh, 32 clean vegetable product and meeting the VietGAP standard and they can have the output of about over 1,000 tons per year. And they, they get the revenue about 300,000 to 250,000 uh, US, USD annually. And the second is the receipt is 40% 40 price, 40 of price a premium in the off season compared to the wholesale market uh, in the local province. And I realize that is making the advantage of the local condition when they focus on digital uh, diary, QR, and also the, the off-season vegetable and cooperative. So they, they work together and make the cooperative to be very successful in uh, selling the product. And uh, they also, uh, their work also uh, help to create jobs for sick local workers, including five female, and the sick worker can uh, Earn about five million uh, Vietnam dollars per month. I think two hundred or three hundred US dollar per month. So it it's quite good for the local farmer. Next, like, please. As uh, so to be uh, a make uh, to be to make it more clear. So I just want to highlight the key back on the women, uh, from working in the together in the cooperative. And from the applying the digital uh, technology like the QR and also the uh, digital the, uh, uh, diary. And the first is it have to empower women. So from only working on the farm, so now the farmer can use a smartphone app and to record to make the uh, uh, the production recording, and it helps them to reduce the work burden and also to communicate easy with the other. And uh, the second is, uh, uh, or the second is it also helps them to improve the access to the wider market. Without the digital 
uh, traceability city system. So th their product may be limited uh, in only some uh, buyers and some uh, you know, small markets, but with the digital traceability system. So they can target not only in Hanoi, but some other city, they especially the modern uh, supermarket. They uh, sign the contract uh, with the co-op and with the, uh, the women there, they can produce own kind of vegetables throughout the year and to many uh, a wider market. And, uh, and I think the most important thing I observed from the interview with the women there is they seem to be uh, very confident about what they are doing and about the success they achieved and about the, even the children, they, they are aware and they, they try to discuss together and to uh, share with me that is they want to certain the uh, practice, but they, they are aware of some challenges and they want to overcome that challenges by mobilizing their own resources and also uh, to make the, their own investment uh, from the profits they get uh, for vegetable production. And uh, I think it's, uh, another point is here is very important that is the social capital development. And uh, the, cooper the cooperative of women not only is make nice the place for the women to produce together, but it's nice the, the place for the women to, to have the social activity together. And they have some activity, more activity outside of the production activity. And they also uh, try to find the market uh, through the co-op. And even someone, they seem to be, sometimes they, they become, they, they can be independent from the co-op to find their own markets from experience. They, they work with the co-op. So, uh, so the key thing is the women empowerment and reducing the manual work and improving the asset to wider market and enhance the confidence of women and the social, social capital, I think that's the key impact uh, of the cooperative of women. And that's applies the digital technology and that's uh, uh, have to develop the capacity for for women. Next, please. Yeah, Nguyen, can I just ask for two minutes, please? Okay, yep, yeah, yeah. And uh, here is some picture of the uh, impact you can see here. You think that it, you may not think that they are a small farmer, but they are really small farmer. Because 35 farmers, they have only 7.5 hectare. But their product now they can sell to the big market in Hanoi, especially the Eon and some of the modern market, Big C, and the own modern uh, uh, supermarket in Hanoi. And their farm it also is with more high technology. and to ensure uh, to ensure the productivity and the environmental uh, friendly, like this. So here are some lesson uh, I can learn. We can learn from the cooperative and digital tool application. Is the first that is uh, in order to uh, apply the digital tools. So I think it I need to have some activity to build the human capacity, especially the technical capacity and uh, economic. Uh, empowerment and an incentive for women to learn and to apply. And the second is a cooperative of women. Definitely is the, the collective, help them to have the collective production and solidarity and help them to reach more market and to work together and to find more uh, potential buyers. And uh, the third lesson we can learn that is with the digital traceability system and market uh, development. It helps the small farmer to earn more income and a stable income, higher income uh, from their own uh, vegetable system. And they have some incentive to make their own investment. And uh, the next lesson is also is, uh, when they are more aware about the uh, sustainability, so they are good agriculture practice, so can help to make the soil improvement and environmental protect, protection. And uh, the last thing is uh, about the physical uh, lesson. So enhance production and business facility uh, and digital uh, tools so that we and JCB uh, city system may be it, not easy for the small farmer at the beginning, but with some support from the 
uh, development agency and also their investment from the farmer so they, they, they can find some affordable technology and to help uh, them to improve the production and to accept more market. Right, please. Yes, so that is the key thing I, I want to share with you because of the limited time. So I, I want to share more, but I think that is time is up. So I am Thank very happy. Thank you so much. Thank yeah, you so much. More. If you want to have any question, Thank you very much uh, uh, for giving me the opportunity to share a story about the women in the upland of Vietnam and to apply the digital technology for improving the income. And now is a clear evidence that is uh, they have the suitable uh, sustainable income uh, from their own farm. Thank you very much. Thank you, Nan. Thank you so much for this very interesting case and and perhaps something that. Um, not many of us have seen yet these these QR codes that are placed on products that then allow the producer who uses a mobile phone to scan this QR code to understand where does this produce come from and has it been produced to the standards that I would like to I would like to see. And I just wanted to sort of summarize that an interesting case also where this cooperative has recognized that there was a an opportunity in the market there was a growing demand in vietnam for products that have been produced to a very high food quality standard and by ensuring that they could prove that their products indeed met these standards they could gain access to a more profitable and more stable market so um perhaps also a lesson learned is to 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 look at for for opportunities where these particular ICT tools can be of particular relevance and use. And um, thank you again, Nuan. We, uh, we we have we're sort of running running out of time, so I would like to um, make the transition to our last speaker today, Miss Anna Osuna Orozco, head of programs of the Rainforest Foundation UK, um, joining us from the UK. Uh, Anna has an academic background in international relations and an MSc in Environment and Development. Prior to her engagement with RF UK, uh, Anna worked uh, for the Mexican Foreign Ministry on issues related to international development. And she's been with RF UK since 2011 and has been head of program since 2020. Um, Anna will present us uh, two digital tools developed by RF UK that were developed to to help local communities and women women monitor their forest resources, make claims on their land rights and promote sustainable and transparent governance. So we're moving away from marketing and organizational management towards um, advocacy and, and, and rights. So please, Anna, the, the floor is yours. Uh, you have also around 12 minutes and we look very much forward to your presentation. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much, Kata, for this opportunity. It's a pleasure to be here. And thank you so much to the speakers who, who came before me. Uh, really fascinating examples. Uh, as Kata says, I'm going to tackle the issue of uh, digital tools for the services development from a different angle. And that is uh, the angle of access to land, uh, a fundamental first step to, to make development work. So maybe to give you a very brief introduction, uh, next slide, please. Um, the Rainforest Foundation UK was um, was founded in 1989 under the premise that defending forest and indigenous people's land rights is uh, an end in itself, but also the most effective and just way to protect the world's rainforests. And um, because of that, uh, our work very early on uh, involved participatory mapping as a tool to claim land rights that were not recognized officially by the state. Um, next slide. Um, so we developed Mapping for Rights, an initiative to capture traditional geographical knowledge uh, with simple to use uh, digital tools in order to develop um, accurately georeferenced maps were of lands that were, as I said, not recognized by the state. Um, these tools, we we aim to make them extremely accurate and universal in, in the 
geographical information systems language, but also flexible enough for people who are not used to using technology to be able to use them and express their knowledge. As you can see, we developed many icon-based um, applications so that even people who are not literate could um, document their geographical knowledge. Um, next slide. Uh, here we can see the result of one uh, village exercise to document their costumery tenure and their livelihood activities in their lands. As you can see, the the um, detail in which they know the boundaries of their lands and the way it's used is uh, extremely sophisticated and very. It's very easy to translate to um, yeah a, a geo reference map that everybody can access and understand. Uh, next, please. So this uh, exercise is extremely important, particularly in areas like the Congo Basin, where large swathes of the rainforest are represented as empty wildernesses. Um, as as you can see, this is can this can be an official map of of the rainforest with no uh, visible human occupation. But next slide, please. When we combine participatory mapping from uh, from communities, you can see that this is an actually uh, very rich social space that is lived and used, and where its occupants um, know where their boundaries of, uh, of their clans are and where they carry out their livelihood activities. As more coloured uh, dots represent livelihood activities and um, uh, education and other kind of social activities. Next, please. Um, this that this uh, representation of traditional land use has been extremely important. I guess in in Latin America, it, it's well known that traditional occupation maps uh, lead to land titling. In Central Africa, this process has been much more recent, but uh, in DRC, the Democratic Republic of Congo, for example, this mapping exercise has have already led to official recognition of community lands as community forests. Um, next, please. In other areas, such as Cameroon, uh, participatory mapping has been used to advocate against a uh, rubber plantation that was uh, creating incredible se severe impacts on local livelihoods. By demonstrating occupation, um, the uh, rubber company agreed on some mitigation measures and um, yeah, an engagement plan with local communities. There's just a, a, a few examples of how participatory mapping have be, can be used. Next, please. Uh, also, by digitizing this traditional knowledge and documenting occupation in a scientifically rigorous way, um, it has been possible for us to demonstrate, for example, that uh, lands held by indigenous and local communities have um, are better at protecting forest and at protecting biodiversity. Here, I'm I'm sorry about the title of the slide. <laughs> I did the presentation was very tired, but uh, what what it represents is um, statistics on deforestation in in an area of Peru, uh, where the uh, orange polygons represent indigenous territories, and as you can see in the graph, deforestation in those areas is quite uh, lower than the regional average uh, demonstrating indigenous people defend defend their lands basically. Next please. Uh, another use for this kind of geographical uh, tool is participatory land use planning, uh, showing uh, the, the land to a community and enabling the uh, participatory discussion on how to use it uh, in a sustainable way and in, in an equitable way. Um, maybe at the, here I, I want to say that uh, these tools for, for us as an organization, ensuring adequate women's participation has been a challenge, but it's extremely important. Um, capturing the knowledge of women, capturing their aspirations and their demands when doing land use planning is key to the success of these exercises in terms, in terms of social well-being, but also environmental protection. Next one, please. Um, here is just an example of a land use plan developed in Peru. So you can see that uh, the exercises done on paper can be really uh, 
can be represented in very sophisticated georeference maps. Um, next one, please. When uh, we, we started working on mapping, um, we identified the need not only to represent land occupation and to use maps to manage the land, but also to use digital tools to defend those lands, and particularly to send alerts on illegal activities of abuses happening in these spaces. This was particularly important in areas with no connectivity because um, by nature, uh, isolated forest communities have very little means to communicate to authorities, to NGOs, to people who can support them. So we developed uh, the Forest Link system. Uh, it's a digital tool that allows uh, forest communities to document illegal activities on the lands and to send them to a centralized platform where an allied NGO can review them and react. So alert uh, the authorities or go to support the community directly, uh, engage in mediation, um, depending on, on, the, on the type of flood. Something innovative about the system was that communities could send alerts even from areas without uh, internet or mobile connectivity. So they could send them via satellite, therefore opening up space for communication uh, in remote forest areas. An important feature of the system was also the ability to aggregate alerts not only to enable specific people to denounce abuses, but also to show trends of uh, abuse, corruption, illegality. Uh, next, please. So this is where you can see the alerts that we have supported in, um, yeah, for seven years in Africa. You can see that once you see the big picture, uh, a story starts to emerge about illegal uh, activities in, in African forests. And that's um, the power of citizen science, enabling uh, individuals to denounce what's happening in their lands. Uh, next, please. Um, so this type of monitoring uh, technology, we have uh, created a very user-friendly application uh, that can be adapted to many different local realities. and uh, can really be used to document whatever specific communities want to document. So here I'm, I'm showing um, cases of illegal logging, illegal mining, and also abuse by um, park rangers, which is a common occurrence in, in Africa. Next, please. And uh, this is the most recent uh, iteration of this tool. Um, Learning from the from the uh, experience of Forest Link, we partnered with a Kenyan organization, the Kenyan Land Alliance, to develop a tool specifically dedicated to report women land rights abuses. So, and we call it Haki Ardi or land rights in Swahili. Basically, uh, the the tool enables women to report abuses to their land rights via text message and for uh, legal case workers to document their cases with an online application. This uh, has really empowered women because it, it has provided them a tool to denounce abuse that is confidential, that, that uh, enables them to reach almost immediate support. And uh, this has really expanded the awareness of, of their rights and, that, and the tools they can use to defend them. But also it has been very important because it has allowed the Kenya Land Alliance to aggregate all the information about land rights abuses in uh, different counties in Kenya. And this has led to policy insights and recommendations because they can observe the, the big picture of, of uh, land rights abuses in, in the country. Uh, it, it, it started working last year, so it's, it's shown very promising results. Um, next one, please. So um, having used all these digital tools for development, I just wanted to reflect on some lessons and challenges. And I know, I, now I see, haven't heard my uh, the other uh, presenters, that there are many common uh, lessons here. Um, I think an, an important thing we have learned is that tools can be user-friendly, they can accommodate you know, illiterate people or people with 
uh, with very different cultural frames of reference at, and as also produce accurate information, scientifically rigorous information. Uh, and we try constantly to make this case uh, to decision makers. Um, another crucial aspect is uh, that digital tools on their own are not enough. Uh, and I think this has been mentioned before as well. Training and constant support are key. Uh, and especially in cases where you are working on advocacy, uh, people who are alerting, who are using the tools to do to claim their rights, need somebody to respond to them and to support them following through. Uh, in this sense, it's not only about using the data, but also creating a network, creating alliances, uh, so that these data can be used for maximum impact. Uh, as I mentioned, and this is something that I'll be very interested to discuss with you, women's participation and inclusion in the use of these apps, even in the ownership of phones, can, can face a position in many of the communities that we work with. And uh, it's something that we're looking constantly uh, on how to tackle. Also, yes, um, when we talk about financial sustainability, it's relatively easy to say, well, maybe we can make people, um, we can support people to buy a phone. But actually, if you really want the system to work, you need the whole uh, support structure around the digital tool to ensure that the system will work. Uh, and lastly, uh, I don't want to be too, um, yeah, to, to live in a, on a sad note, but it's important to take into account that these digital tools uh, increase advocacy power, raise the voices of isolated communities, but this may also represent a risk for, for defenders. In that sense, uh, we need to be very conscientious of accompanying digital tools with protection measures. Uh, for the people using them. And this needs to be part of a, of a working methodology. And uh, yes, I think that's it. Uh, I hope you find this interesting. I'm looking forward to the discussion. Thank you very much. Thank you so very much, Anna. This was very interesting. I also the first time that I've been introduced to these tools and and yes, incredibly fascinating to see an application that stands really at the beginning of um, the kind of activities we have just talked about previously, which is the access to to land resources and um, and of course this event is meant to be an inspiration also for for us in farm producer organizations such as yours as they perhaps um, contemplate their their next steps um, and the external support they might would like to apply for in the kind of applications that um, could be interesting for them to in implement for their members as well. Uh, so thank you, Anna. And in, in the interest of time, I, I I must say that we have to skip the question and answer session. So I, I really encourage everyone who has questions to our presenters to post them in the chat and for our presenters to to keep an eye for questions that are addressed to them and to try to respond to them. Um, and I would now like to move on to our discussions in smaller circles, the sort of challenges and solutions and your experiences with digital tools. Um, so we have three breakout groups, uh, French, Spanish, and English. Yes, so we would like to know um, what were the, the interesting bits in the presentations for you personally, for your own context, and how do you think the tools that were presented could be useful within your own organizations? Where could you see challenges in implementing these ideas? And perhaps also what are the tools that your organization already uses or which areas do you see where tools could be, these ICT tools could be useful? And we will post these chats in the individual, sorry, these questions in the individual breakout group chats as well. So you will have them present. And of course, the facilitators of our breakout groups are also aware of them. So you will need to nominate a rapporteur and then, um, when we come back to the plenary, it would be great if you could um, give us in five minutes a summary of the things that you have touched on. Okay, welcome back. Perhaps this is also now a good opportunity to 
to to have a discussion all together. Um, so if I could perhaps um, ask the rapporteur of the um, of the French group of my group, Aisha, if you are here with us to maybe give us a quick impression of what we talked about and uh, then we can pass on to the next groups. Okay. Bonjour tout le monde et je remercie Kata pour la parole. Je suis Aisha Ourosama, la directrice exécutive du Centre d'autonomisation de la jeune fille et de la femme africaine. Et je suis la rapporteuse, ou bien la rapportrice, voilà, du groupe euh, français. Donc, euh, dans notre groupe principalement, nous avons déjà profité pour euh, faire des présentations, euh, nous connaître davantage par rapport à nos différents secteurs d'activité. Et nous avons également éventuellement parlé de tout ce qu'il y a comme euh, leçons apprises au cours de cette rencontre-là par rapport aux différentes interventions. Et nous avons euh, euh, notamment discuté avec Madame Anna qui était dans notre groupe. Et, et nous avions euh, discuté des éventuelles possibilités de partage d'expériences entre différentes structures. Donc, euh, bon, pour, comme question, euh, moi j'aimerais euh, savoir un peu plus C'est vrai que ma question s'adresse à tous les présentateurs. Comment est-ce que l'apprentissage de, de la maîtrise des techniques d'information et de communication se fait avec les femmes rurales? Parce que nous savons tous et tous ici combien de fois ce n'est pas vraiment facile pour nos mamans euh, en milieu rural de s'approprier ces techniques là. Est-ce qu'il y a des expériences qu'on pourrait partager avec nous dans ce sens ou bien des idées euh, de partage euh, voilà, de ces techniques là ou bien des idées d'apprentissage qu'on pourrait véhiculer avec nous pour qu'on puisse également savoir comment il faut euh, peut-être aller vers le développement de ces technologies là et puis euh, les mettre à échelle au niveau de nos Community respective. Je vous remercie. Um, so yes, thank you very much for this question. It's a very good question, and I'm sure many of our participants um, would would like to hear some ideas from our presenters, perhaps on this. And how do we how how do we um, enable uh, capacity building for women who live and work in remote rural areas and perhaps have less access to to formal education and 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 other types of uh, services. Bash, uh, perhaps um you have you have some experience with a very large organization that is working with very remote and very poor women. Um right. so um I think Seva's strength is its women members and uh the uh, the capacity building method which they have adopted. And this runs across all areas of capacity building. It's not just information technology. Uh, they have uh, uh, anchors on specific themes. Information technology, information communication technology is one of those themes. And these anchors are women from the villages who have undergone training at Seva headquarters and have been trained to be trainers, who then take the training down to the grassroots women users. And the training is not provided in a formal setting uh, or for an entire day's duration, but in short, um, very short sessions, one to two hour sessions, which are preceded and followed by um, some kind of ice breaking or something other than the core subject area of the training. So it keeps the participants' interest and engagement alive uh, and wanting uh, her to come back for the next session to learn something new. So it is it is incrementally provided and uh, capacity building does not end with provision of training. The trainer, because she is 
uh, now the onus the onus of learning is not placed on the learner but on the trainer the trainer has to report in terms of how many uh, members have learned so and so skills so she keeps in contact with the learners and for as long as required the trainer can come back uh, sorry the trainee can come back to the trainer and ask questions um to to clarify whatever doubts that she may have in addition in it what i found was uh, women are also approaching either their kids younger generation who is more tech savvy or they are approaching younger generation members of seva who have picked up the skill so training is learning is happening in multiple ways and because uh it is not an add on the application or the system which has been introduced is part of part and parcel of the role uh of these women uh, who are members of seva mm-hmm. they have to learn it they it it is linked in some ways with the economic benefits which they derive so there is a high level of motivation uh to learn Thank so multiple you. factors at work yes thank you varsha and indeed uh, the the organizations that some of you are part of these forest and farm producer organizations have precisely also this kind of function of trickling down knowledge to local groups um i know that the the english group uh, rapporteur is running out of um laptop battery so i would like to give her the floor to her to to report us back what was discussed in her group please the floor is yours alima yeah so thank you very much for the opportunity i want to report on behalf of the english group we were five, five in number so for us the, the learning that uh, we did in the area of all the three presentations i'm just going to summarize that but my team will add up when i leave something the first one was the fact that uh, for the sewa group they were able to use ICT to manage large numbers of women and then get them to be very effective and efficient that is a very good lesson that as ffpos we all need to know that technology can provide that opportunity then the rainforest foundation to the fact that working with rural women they were able to give them capacity the right skills to use technology to work very well and get all the activities done at the right places and then get returns i think that is also a very good learning of what technology can do and that from that angle means that the location doesn't matter if you get the right skills and using the right ict tools you should be able to get it right then for the use of qr code that was also mentioned i think that uh, the, our breakout session also highlighted that very important a uh, learning that uh, it provided opportunity for the producers to have a very good pricing mechanism and be more sustainable then they can compete with the pl- bigger players in the whole in the industry of vegetable production then we also learned one other share was the linkage that a uh, technology provides women like the example that Siwa was giving where the initial investment for a smartphone appeared expensive but as her time went on and they started to use it she was able to know that it's more cost effective it is also better and then the returns on investment was more the last point that uh, our team our group raised was the issue of cooperatives to make quick innovations what to have very well established cooperatives they build very strong database and as a resource so when they they also are able to mobilize more resources with their numbers and they are able to use that one to keep and respond to calls very fast and they are also able to meet deadlines and compete very quickly so remember this is what i said maybe we can add up it we think that i've left out something but these are the learning that our groups were were were, were showing Thank, Thank you very much Alima. Thank you. Thank you so much. Um could I also now um give the Spanish group the opportunity to report back who is going to who's going to tell us what you've discussed. 
Estoy aquí. Aquí esto. Peace, no sé si Peace. Chapter is yours. Ya. Yeah. Eh, sí, justo en el grupo de de, de habla hispana, entonces les voy a comentar algo que comentaron en, en, el, en el grupo. Bueno, eh, estábamos hablando sobre este tema de, de la importancia del uso de la tecnología. Alguien de los expositores mencionó sobre que el uso de la tecnología tiene que tener este enfoque inclusivo de trabajo colectivo. Me, me parece que no ha y igual rescatar el trabajo que ha realizado eh, la, la organización CEWA sobre el uso de la tecnología en el tema también de, de comercializar eh, las, eh, eh, los productos. Y en este sentido, eh, en el grupo eh, expuso eh, la, la organización Callari sobre el uso de, la tecno, de, las, de estas TICs en la implementación de software para la trazabilidad de, la, de los productos. Y entonces eh, comentaba también sobre el riesgo que que es también trabajar con el código QR, porque también es de, eh, revisar la información que se expone en el código QR de la, de la información de la producción, de los productos. Entonces, en ese sentido, ellos están buscando estas alternativas y estrategias de qué información también ubicar en el código QR. ¿no? Eh, hablaban también de que las organizaciones requieren capacitación en el uso de las TICs, de las TICs eh, para poner en... Eh, eh, para hacer eh, uso del acceso al mercado de estos productos que tienen eh, valor agregado. También este enfoque inclusivo, la necesidad, siempre hemos discutido de que las, en las organizaciones tiene que haber esa participación de los jóvenes y también puede a través de las TICs, ¿no? eh, que ellos eh, como se, a través de la educación, entonces manejan estos temas tecnológicos, incluso podría ser una oportunidad para las organizaciones de que se pueda vincular este, este sector joven a las organizaciones y de esta manera también aportar. Y bueno, desde, desde Triple F también ver los mecanismos de cómo eh, pueden eh, apoyar a las organizaciones para que se pueda hacer uso de las TICs, las compañeras de las organizaciones puedan capacitarse en el uso de las TICs, ¿no? Entonces, eh, también hay otras posibilidades de trabajar en eh, usando las TICs, ¿no? Por ejemplo, en el tema del turismo, en el tema de la guianza del, del agroturismo, turismo rural, turismo comunitario. Comercial y, comercializar y potenciar los productos de la chacra, ¿no? de, la, de, la, de los cultivos ¿no? de cada organización de las mujeres. También como eh, eh, la compañera, me parece, no, no recuerdo, Ana me parece que comentaba sobre el, el tema del uso de las TICs en, el, en la elaboración de mapas digitales participativos en donde nosotras pu pudiéramos ubicar información territorial que a la organización le interesa, como por ejemplo en el caso de, las, de algunas organizaciones, el tema de dónde se ubican los prestadores de salud ancestral, las vertientes, los ojos de agua, el, los alojamientos comunitarios. Entonces, puede ayudar bastante en el, en el tema de, la, de, de usar esta información en la toma de decisiones. El tema también de, de ubicar a los conservacionistas de semillas, eh, el tema de salud ancestral, que ya lo había mencionado. Eh, también este, eh, ubicar eh, zonas de riesgo eh, y, y que estos mapas también sean elaborados de manera participativa. Las limitantes, como dijo la compañera de CEUA, es eh, el tema del acceso a estos equipos tecnológicos, el, el tema de la conectividad, el conocimiento y uso eh, por parte de las productoras, de las, de las mujeres, porque hay una brecha, ¿no? Hay una brecha de desigualdad de que limita a las mujeres a este uso de estas tecnologías y que de a poco, a través de Triple F, deberíamos como que enlazar y, y generar esta posibilidad de que se pueda, eh, nosotras las mujeres, capacitarnos en el uso de estas tecnologías. Eso sería por parte del, del grupo. No sé si alguien quiere aportar más. Gracias. Thank you so much, Mary. That was very comprehensive. Uh, you, you are a very um, efficient group, it seems. <laughs> um, yes, I, I, I think these are all really, really useful observations. And I wanted to use the opportunity to perhaps share a few more learnings um, from the SEVA case study, because uh, as a background, um, we have also... Um, asked uh, Vasha and Nuan to write up these these case studies, and they will be published 
um, on our website and you will receive the link to this once they're published so you can read up a little bit more details. But I really liked um, the way uh, Vasha formulated the, the reasons why SEWA was so successful um, in implementing these, these technologies. And, and we need to keep in mind, of course, that they have been around for a long time and they have started looking at these technologies a long time ago. Um, but she sort of summarized it up as 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 Seva, the organization always being very forward looking and having a, a sort of futuristic outlook and, and forward planning approach. Um, but then also um, a, a quite a, a stable IT team, and uh, and interestingly also. Uh, what she highlighted was it was really important also for the organization to first of all understand really well the processes for which they required a technological solution because only if you really understand what what it is that you will need to have included in the system will you be able to communicate to whoever is going to be the the technical provider for this tool to provide you exactly with the tool that you need to the to the to the level of sophistication or complexity that you will require for your members. Um, I can see Anna Sander, please. Sorry, if we still have time, just a quick reaction to because I think a common denominator in the comments have, has been how do we ensure access to even like smartphones for remote rural people? Uh, and and something I would like encourage uh, or, or something I want to share is that for our project in Kenya, our Kenyan partner really pushed us to develop a very simple interface based on basic Nokia phones, or how do you call those phones now? Uh, Non-smartphones, <laughs> based on uh, text messaging. So sometimes less technology is better. Uh, and we have linked that text messaging interface to which much uh, many more women have access to the more sophisticated smartphone-based one. Uh, so th th this is an interesting, um, th th this is a lot of potential that we are creative and how do we use even basic technology that uh, can reach more people? Just wanted to put it out there. Thank you, Anna. Thank you. That's a really, really good point. I can see Nuan's hand up, please. Okay, so uh, I just want also to say about how to build the capacity for the rural women. Actually, to apply the ICT, so it's not easy for the rural women, not only the remote, but the rural women with uh, who have uh, not uh, a good uh, education background. So in the case of uh, Tự nhiên Cooperative, I think uh, they are successful because uh, there is uh, the young girls who uh, graduated from university and she is willing to work for the co-op. And she is the one who can use the computer, who is the one who know how to uh, transfer the data from uh, mobile phone app to computer. And she's the one who uh, work closely with the project and to work side by side with uh, the, uh, the member of the cooperative. Because she's the vice director of the cooperative and she help uh, the other day by day and she stay there and by learning together and working together and it help everyone uh, in the cooperative, the, especially the rural women who never used a uh, mobile phone app before can make the uh, digital uh, recording on the web, uh, on the uh, mobile phone app. And the other thing that they also set up the social uh, network. In Vietnam, we call the Zalo, it's not the social uh, group. So they, they work, uh, they, they join together. So for any uh, difficulty, so she, we, he or she, we, the member will ask in the group and the out of the technique, the leader will we solve the problem quickly, or they can go to see the uh, young girls and to help to solve the problem. And uh, I think it's uh, it's very important to have some uh, educated and young person, not everyone, but maybe one or two, to to work together with the co-op and to to help the other. But uh, without any uh, one like that, I think it's really hard, especially when when you introduce the uh, ICD uh, to the rural women. And uh, at the beginning, it re really hard. Even the project, many projects, uh, it was successful after the project finished because there's no one there to certain the uh, practice. And very important to have someone uh, willing to work for the co-op. But uh, 
have the basic education and capacity to apply for the ICT to use the computer and to to handle the uh, digital problem. Yeah. So I just want to. Something Thank you very much, Noan. Yes, indeed. And that's a very, a very interesting example also of where um, the use of this new type of technology can also encourage youth to remain in the rural areas because all of a the sudden there are new opportunities for them to 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 use their capacities and their skills and 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 um and gain a living. Um we have run out of time, unfortunately. Um I will promise the next time we will we will schedule an even longer uh, longer um, moment to discuss and um, uh, our colleagues have been busy capturing the points that you have made throughout and um, as um, I've said we've we've recorded this session it will be put online we will send you the link we will also send you the list of participants so really encouraging you to continue these conversations, follow up on questions with the presenters. Um, we really would like to make this a living community of, of engaged women who, who can exchange experiences, inspire each other, mentor each other, um, and connect further. Um, so I, with this, I would like to wrap up and a huge thank you to all of you for the time that you've spent with us, for all your inputs, your wisdom, your courage. Um, it was great to see you. Thank you to our presenters for all the hard work in preparing the presentations. Thank you for the team to making for making this happen. And I look very much forward to, to seeing you at our next event.